Hello, we are here for the ESC Congress. I'm Dr. Çetin Erol from Ankara University, Turkey. And I have a very distinguished guest here from Hammersmith Hospital, Dr. Petros Nihayanopoulos from United Kingdom. And we are going to talk on the one of the new guidelines uh, launched at this Congress, infective endocarditis. Petros, why do we need a new revision of infective endocarditis guidelines? Chetin, that's a very good question. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, and uh, very long overdue. It has been more than uh, six years, really, since the last guidelines in 2009. And there have been so much new information. There have been new publications, right. and in particular, new uh, randomized studies on surgical versus medical treatment on patients with uh, uh, infective endocarditis. There has been an amazing progress on imaging. Right. Echocardiography, of course, I would say it is important and always will remain the first line imaging modality for mm -hmm. a patient with known or suspected in endocarditis, but there have been other modalities as, as well. Uh, PET-FTG, uh, CT, and uh, nuclear who, that have uh, really helped a lot into the patient's diagnosis, but also management. And uh, thirdly, it has been uh, uh, developed the role of a multidisciplinary approach, the role of the heart team. In the past, it was the role of the uh, consultant or the doctor to uh, make the diagnosis and treatment. Now we have to in involve other people, experts, surgeons, experts, microbiologists, experts, ID physicians, experts, rheumatologists, neurologists, everything. Endocarditis hits every part of the body. And that's why we need new guidelines to incorporate all this information into one. Okay, uh, what are the main differences between the previous ones and the new ones? Especially, I know that there was a lot of discussions about the role of the TE and TO transesophageal echocardiography uh, for the uh, suspecting patients with in infective endocarditis. Yes, well, that is, uh, that is a very important uh, uh, role, of course. Imaging and echocardiography has progressed enormously from a simple uh, old-fashioned, so to speak, with today's criteria, two-dimensional echocardiography. We have developed three-dimensional echocardiography, both transthoracic and transophageal. We can see abscesses. We can see vegetations in three dimensions. We can see the mobility. We can see the size. Uh, and uh, also we can look at the myocardial mechanics. We can look at, uh, appreciate uh, the failing heart much better. Right. And as you know, one of the reasons why to uh, prevent embolizations is to size the vegetation. And that's very important. And that's very important to do it early. But also, I don't forget that we need to add other modalities as well. And although I am a strong proponent of echocardiography, as you know, yeah, I, I think uh, I recognize the uh, cardiac MR and CT are becoming very, very important Especially for patients' Especially for the patients with prosthetic heart valves. Oh, prosthetic valves, uh, abscesses, aortic uric abscesses, that uh, right. even transophageal echo may have some limitations, and I admit that CT can show abscesses, the extent of abscesses, that the surgeons love it. On the other hand, when you said surgeons, uh, we know that one of the most important points uh, for the patients with infective endocarditis, when do we decide when do we send the patients to the surgeons? Well, <laughs> that is again the role of uh, the multi... Uh, uh, all, moda all people to speak together into part of the heart team, really. But uh, heart failure is one very important aspect. Heart failure is lethal. And to prevent heart failure and to prevent uh, the, the, the muscle to fail when the valve is totally destroyed and can not be recovered, we need to intervene early. Uh, to prevent embolization right. is very important. Typically, the size of vegetation of uh, more than uh, 10 millimeters length uh, need, uh, has a very high chance 
for embolization. But remember, embolization early. It is really the first week uh, that uh, carries the, the, high, the high risk for embolization. After the first week, the second week, the chances for embolization, even if the vegetation is 10 or 12 or 15 millimeters long, uh, the chances for embolization are diminished. And that is why it is important to recognize it early in order to intervene early. Right. And what about the medical treatment? I mean, can you say a few words about that? Well, medical treatment needs, I can say with one word, <laughs> treat early. Early. Treat early. Don't procrastinate. Make an early diagnosis and institute appropriate treatment. Involve the microbiologist. Involve the ID uh, uh, physicians. They are experts. They know the, the organisms. They, they have the appropriate tests. They need to be involved early, as the surgeons need to be involved early. And that is, again, I cannot emphasize it more, very, very important, a multidisciplinary approach. And that brings the new idea of these guidelines is the role of the, heart, the, of the endocarditis team. team. Endocarditis team incorporates all these uh, specialties and sub-specialties. But also it uh, refers to the endocarditis center. So once you make a diagnosis of infective endocarditis and it, there are complications, you need to refer this patient to an endocarditis, so to speak, reference center early because there the microbiologists and the surgeons may intervene as soon as need arises. Uh, if the endocarditis is not complicated and it is a straightforward organism, sensitive uh, to antibiotics, then yes, it, he, the patient or she, can be treated locally, but be in direct communication day after day about the patient and be able to immediately refer once a complication rises. Well, thank you very much. I think uh, this new guidelines will change in a lot of things in our practice, especially for the infective endocarditis team and center as uh, we see as we uh, talk to and also the role of the echocardiography and the other imaging techniques will be most important and i hope it would be useful for the clinicians in practice i would like to summarize in three words yes it is what i usually say the three e's early diagnosis early, early treatment, treatment early surgery good thank you very much